What's wrong? She said, Hello. She went to the store. You leave your five year old home alone so you can go smoke weed. You gotta hang the phone up. We're gonna handcuff you. Don't make it work. You realize it's 6 30 in the morning, right? I, I do now. You realize that your daughter, seven? Yes. Seven years old, has been by herself with us for four? No. For four hours? Go ahead and put your hands behind no, your back. No, I want to talk. Put your hands behind your back. Oh my God. Get off of me! Ever wondered what happens when toxic Karen parents go too far? Buckle up, because today we're looking at the four cases of Karens getting caught abusing children behind closed doors. Can you imagine a seven-year-old and a nine-month-old baby left completely alone? That's exactly what happened on October 19th, 2021 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Police were called to an apartment complex after a frantic 911 call about two young kids being abandoned. Soon, officers arrive at the scene and find two kids, the little girl probably scared and confused, and the baby who wouldn't even understand what's going on. It's a heartbreaking situation, right? To protect the identities of these children, we'll switch to audio only for the next part of the story. But trust me, this is just the beginning of a crazy turn of events. Buckle up, because things are about to get even more unbelievable. Hello, Hi. police department. Hi. What's going on, guys? Is everything okay over here? We got called out here to check up on you guys. It's okay. Nobody's in trouble. Yeah, nobody's in trouble at all. We're just gonna talk to your mom when she comes back home, that's all. Hello, this is Officer Sean Delaney with the Albuquerque Police Department. Is this Samantha Sanchez? Well, I'm trying to get a hold of you because uh, I'm at your apartment with your unattended children and I was wondering where you were at. Okay, that's a ways off. We'll see you when you get here. Imagine the kids are home alone, scared out of their minds, then bam, two cops show up. Scary, right? But at least they're safe. Now here's the crazy part. Their stupid mother, Samantha, takes 20 whole minutes to show up after the cops call. Seriously? Can you imagine how much longer it would have taken if they hadn't been there? This mom's reaction, let me tell you, is a whole other story. You won't believe the attitude she gives the cops when they try to talk to her. It's a wild ride from here. What's that? What do you mean that I want? Yeah, why are you here? Because you left your children unattended. They're fine. Yeah, but they're a little young. And so my daughter knows the drill. She knows to stay home. And you can mind your business and yeah. I could mind my business if there wasn't a violation of There's not the a law. violation of a law. You just a need to mind your business. Old, no, a seven so year who old. So who the f who the f you know what you know? Get away from my house. Okay, there's an officer inside your apartment. Is there? Yes ma'am. Did you call the cops on me? Excuse me, you can like take your tone down. Okay. You're in my so house. you don't need to yell at You're your kids house. because you left them here. Do you understand they're, that? She, they're taking care of. They know better. They know better than yes, what? They know. They they always stay home. Can you and I talk outside, please? No, you can like, mind your business. Okay. I at have this the point, right to this is, a, this is a child abuse I have investigation. The, no, okay, it's not an that? abuse investigation. Yes. They're not even been abused. Yes, it is no, an they're abuse. Not. This is a they're neglect not. They're not investigation. Abuse. They're not abuse. Okay, so here's the thing. According to the law, leaving kids this young alone is a huge deal. It falls under child abandonment or endangerment, which are serious charges. Think about it, a seven-year-old and a nine-month-old baby left completely by themselves. It's hard not to get mad, right? especially when you consider the potential consequences. This mom is acting way too casually about this whole situation. If she truly cared about her children's safety, she wouldn't have put them at such risk. This could have ended much worse with the kids being taken away from her entirely. Can you like come out, go in the side? Yeah, I would like her to stay inside and I don't want to see, I want her to see her mom upset like this. Can you come on, because I want to talk. 
You call the cops on me? She didn't. All right, who let's talk over here. Who called the cops on me? First off, I want to know who called the cops on me. First, First of all, there's a few things we need to work out before you decide who, which of your neighbors ratted on you. Yes, okay? who snitched on me? I want to know who it was first. And then second of all... So you don't see a problem with leaving your children no, in this No, because they've apartment. been here all the time. They do this all the time. And That's they're taking care of. So you're upsetting her and making her cry? Mm -hmm. and just walking down a no, bit? you can close my door and get out of my house. That's no, what you it's can. It's a criminal investigation. No, it's not. It's yes, not. It's Nothing's been criminally done. Actually, yes, this is no, a crime. No, it's not. Okay, well, I'm going to leave, sir, so um, you can, like... So are, are you requesting that uh, CYFD takes your children? Is that what you're requesting? <laughs> and if CYFD takes my f***ing um, children, I will be suing the officers okay. and everything. So right, so do you right wanna, now, this is child abuse, okay? Do you want a lawsuit or do you want to leave abuse. me alone? Take the lawsuit. Yeah. Take the lawsuit. Okay, Absolutely. then get it. So are you wanting to go to jail? Is that what you're wanting? I'm not even doing anything wrong to my kids. My kids are taken care of. Okay. Everything's so, fine. So here's the thing. You're making her upset right Come now, here. okay? You can talk to her for a second, but we, you need, can to, leave my we need to sort this out. And leave them out of the no, you left your kids alone. They're and that's fine. Why we're here. They have everything. They are fine, officer. So the mom keeps claiming everything's fine with her kids, but let's be real here. Leaving two young children alone like that, anything could have happened. It doesn't seem to click with her that she just committed a serious crime, and now she has to face the consequences. On top of that, she tries to use her daughter's tears to manipulate the police into leaving. That's just unbelievably low. This situation is already messed up, and trust me, it gets even worse. There's another part to this story that shows just how awful this woman's actions were toward her own children, and we'll get to that very soon. Why are you picking on us? Yeah, I guess if she's not going to cooperate. What yeah. is wrong? Okay. Why? No, so I don't want to be under we can, arrest. We can no. either have a conversation about this civilly, or you can go in the back of a police car. Do you understand how that works? Okay, well, let's talk, and you need to okay. dock your you voice down about so 20. Not upsetting her so much. I don't need to walk away from my doorway, sir. So, okay. let's talk. Go ahead and put your hands no, behind your back. No, I want to talk. Put your hands behind your back. Don't pull away from us. Go to my car. Hurry, go to my car and tell Thurman to come get in the van. Hurry. Hurry, my car is on the car. I need another cop. Okay. Okay. This is ridiculous. You're what ridiculous. Why don't you mind your business? Stop pulling away from us. Stop fighting with us. Get off of me now. Get off. Get on your stomach. Oh my god! Get off of me! Let go of this stuff. Let go. This is child abuse by leaving him in there like that. Get off of me! Stop it. Get off! Let me up! Let me up now! Okay, things just went from bad to worse. The woman, despite her size, actually started physically resisting the officers. Just imagine a tense scene, a scared child, and now the officers are struggling to restrain a grown woman. It's a chaotic situation, and to ensure everyone's safety, they had to call in backup. Hold on. <laughs> Why are you guys so mean? Listen, you're taking us, taking us, and try to relax. Let me up off this nasty floor. We will. We will. We will. Oh, why are you pulling it off of me? Oh, why is this hurting me? Oh, this one's hurting my arm. It's not moving. Hey, listen to me. Okay, listen to me. I'm gonna loosen it. Oh, you better let you better comply, okay? I am! Or force Come will be used on. against you, okay? You guys are wrong! This is so unnecessary! No. What you did was unnecessary. No, he came at me the wrong it way! Let me go! This not too tight. Oh, let me go! That hurts! Could you do this a little bit? Imagine a parent abandoning their kids for several hours. And on top of that, their behavior is just, well, not that great when they are called out on it. It appears as though they are attempting to escape accountability for their actions. Classic Karen move, right? 
their behavior only serves to validate what everyone has always assumed. I mean, oh! Well, just let me get up! I want my baby daddy to have my phone. And you guys need to stop minding your business. Tell this landlord to go away. Go. I'll stay here with their property. Oh, these things are too tight. I'm not walking until they're looser. Well, we can't do it until we get the car, okay? I can't walk. They're too painful. Samantha, your daughter wants to know if she can have her phone. Would that be okay for me to get that for her? I didn't even do anything wrong. Go ahead. Just get my keys and my phone and go give it to my baby daddy. Can you get my phone and my keys to my baby daddy, please? I can't do anything. How are you going to expect somebody to jump in? I was involved, so let me just do everything. I will get my shit. I will get my shit dismissed anyways. There you go. There's no evidence. Besides battery officer fucking fighting. That's it. The fact that you weren't here. Like no, there isn't. They'll be negative. They'll be dismissed. Well, my cases are always dismissed. dismissed. I'm sure the judge will love to hear you say that. Yep. <laughs> Let me talk to my daughter's dad. Now, please. Mm-hmm. Samantha was arrested and charged with battery and assault on a police officer, abandoning her child and driving without a license. But here's the twist. They dropped the battery and no license charges in exchange for her pleading guilty to the assault and abandonment charges. But wait, there's more. Just six months later, she was arrested again. This time she shot her son's toe off during an argument with her boyfriend. Awful, right? She ended up pleading guilty to two counts of child abuse. Now, she could have faced up to nine years in jail, but she got a suspended sentence of one year in jail and five years of probation instead. If you think this Karen was irresponsible, then be prepared to witness this upcoming drunk mom. Before we move on, hit that like button. In October 2023, there was this wild situation at a Florida bar so this little seven-year-old girl walks into the bar all by herself with no clue where her mom is. Turns out her mom left her in the car and vanished somewhere. And get this, it's two o'clock in the morning, way past a seven, year old's bedtime, right? Hey, my friends, they're heroes. <laughs> Hi, 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 Chris. How you doing? Oh, let me a little pumpkin. <laughs> so Yeah? Okay. Where'd you walk from? Um, I walked from my mm -hmm. car. Alright, this is on you guys. We're out. <laughs> Alright. It's okay. You can tell us where you came from, okay? You want to sit in that comfy booth with them? You want to yeah. sit with them? Yeah. It's okay. Where's this fun ball ice cream? <laughs> it melted. It melted? You let it, you let it just melt all the way? What's your mom's name? Um, her name is Veronica Roxanne. Veronica, what was the last name? Yeah. Roxanne. Bell. Bell? Yeah. Okay. Her name is Roxanne and her last name is Bell. You're awesome at this. Where's your mommy at? Sit next to me if you need to, okay? You don't know? You said you walked from your car. Yeah, because um, she, I fell asleep through Okay. okay. Where is your car around here somewhere? Um, yeah, it's over there. I can show you it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Easy way to solve this. Run the tag on the car, get mom's name, get mom's address. Would you emergency like contact number. We'll yeah. So, have you ever heard of a kid being left alone in a car, especially at night? In Florida, no less. You gotta wonder what someone's thinking. But hey, 
Thank goodness for some amazing people who spotted this little one and didn't hesitate to help. They checked on the kid, made sure she was all right, and even called the cops. The officer came over and the kid, bless her, answered a few questions. But then, things got a bit strange. It's okay, you show us wherever it is, okay? These guys are just helping us, okay? Okay. You tell them anything that you feel like you need to tell them. Okay. And they found the oh boy. Phone. You found Santa Delia? Phone? Oh, yeah. You left your phone and her Sure. Hey, is that light over there? Sure. What is that? Yeah, those are the keys. The keys. Okay. Do you want to give it to this night? Yeah, he's gonna help us out, okay? He can maybe be in any of these buildings. Okay. She walked off to one, but I can't see where because she turned the lights off. Okay. Has this ever happened before? Um, no. She never leaves the car without me. No? Okay. She said it's something really important. And she said it would be a real quick when it hasn't because it was like, was like five to ten minutes. Which way did you say she walked? Um, I couldn't see because she turned the the lights off, every single one. Okay. So here's the thing. People online are pretty divided about whether this was a one-time thing or not. Most folks don't buy it, especially because the little girl seemed so calm and not scared at all. Some people think maybe she's just used to it, you know, like it's happened before. Or maybe she just thinks this time is different because her mom always came back quickly before. The truth just keeps spilling out more and more as the cops try to uncover the situation. Um, she has a purse that goes around here and it's a um, prisoner. And then she wears it right mostly around here or here. Mm -hmm. And then she has her phone in it, but she didn't bring her phone, right? Mm -mm, what no, color was her right shirt, there. maybe? Do you it know was, what, what was like, it, like pink, purple? Like a long sleeve to white. Long sleeve long white? Sleeve, was she wearing pants? Um, no. No? What was she wearing? Um, she was wearing a long sleeve shirt, mm -hmm. and then she wore, um, she wore some shorts. Wore some shorts? shorts? Like shorts like me? Um, yeah. Like this? Oh, like wow. little shorts, tight yeah. shorts. Yeah. Okay, and a You know, you understand my frustration with this whole situation, right? What on God's green earth were you doing that your daughter is here by herself at seven years old, where she's terrified and goes into the bar and asks random bar people to help and call the police. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. So, sorry ain't gonna we're, cut we're, it. We're, yeah. sorry, we're, 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 she said she was in a car somewhere over there. Okay. Can you show us? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So, wait, you were in the car alone? Yes. Whose car? I have no idea. Why are you in someone's car you don't even know? I have, I, I have no idea. You understand how this works, right? I do. What's your uh, drug of choice? My, my drug of choice is alcohol, but like, I, I, I don't know how I ended up in the car. I just woke up in the car, honestly. Can you believe it? The police suspected something more than just alcohol was involved. I believe even many of us think that. This whole situation has the hallmarks of narcotics or something related to it. I mean, the mom left her daughter alone for over four hours, and then she woke up in a random car that she didn't even know. Something doesn't add up here, right? This story is suspenseful, to say the least. How'd you end up here? Um, I, I came here to meet friends. Yeah, so like, all I, all I know is I, I came here to meet friends, um, and then I, I woke up in the car, yeah, Renan. I, I came here to meet my friend Renan, and then I woke up in that car. That's all I know. I, I, I really didn't mean to meet, leave my seven-year-old alone in the, in the car. I would never do such a thing. I mean, her, her, her dad died last year. He was murdered. He was stabbed in, 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 the, in the heart. Um, like, I would never try to leave my seven-year-old alone. So, when you met your friends here, Renan? Yes. You when you met Renan here, did you go into the bar? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Did you have a drink? Yes. 
What was the last thing you remember? The last thing I remember is me and my son were on here and then having a drink, and that's it. But, like, I mean, I'm not an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I can hold my drink. Like, I'm, I'm 35 years old. You know what I mean? Like, that was probably, like, my third drink. You know what I mean? So, um, it, it shouldn't have knocked me out, but you I, feel... I don't know why I was in that car. Now... I'm not a woman, and yeah, I don't like, know how things yes, are. I understand. Do you feel like maybe you were violated in any way? I don't know. Like, I woke up in a car that wasn't mine. I woke up in a situation where I, I didn't know where I was at. Were um, your clothes on? My clothes were on, yes. Um, my clothes were buttoned, yes. Um, but... Um, I don't know how I ended up like this. You know what I mean? Like now, here's where it gets interesting. They tested Veronica for all the usual drugs, you know, the common ones. But guess what? All the tests came back negative, and they haven't released the results online. We're not sure what might be the reason behind that. I am no idea. trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yes, sir. All right, because me as a parent, I have a son, and I would never in my right mind, mean right. anything like that. I mean, I have a so, DCF case, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would never, you know what I mean? But I, I, I honestly, officer, I, I have no idea how I got to this point, literally. You know what I mean? Like, what woke me up is your all bright lights, you know? Like, I, I, I've never been, like, I mean, all I drink was beer. I, I had three beers. So, I remember getting here, I remember having a beer, and then that's it. I don't know how I woke up in a car that looks like mine. I mean, it's very similar to mine. Um, and then leaving my daughter, you know. It was supposed to be just a very brief interaction, and then I was supposed to walk out. And then... So I have to ask, yes, sir. Not wearing any shoes. Yeah. Which is and fine, I mean, I people who wear... Like, you know, <laughs> your flip-flops are in your car, so yes, did you go into the bar with no shoes on? Uh, I mean, I had to have, um, but uh, like I said, it was supposed to be a, a very brief interaction and I was supposed to go home. Veronica Roxanne was charged with child neglect without great bodily harm, which is a third degree felony. She could face up to five years in prison and a $5,000 fine if she's convicted. Her trial is still ongoing. After she was taken to the police station, the Florida Department of Children and Families took custody of her daughter. Sadly, her child is still with them, but hey, it's at least safe and better than being with mom, right? Hopefully, she finds a better family. Moving on to our next case, we have a five-year-old crying and begging for help. On March 7th, 2023, the police got a call about a child screaming for help around 6.45 p.m. When the cops got there, they found a five-year-old boy all by himself, totally scared. I mean, that breaks your heart, doesn't it? But the story takes a drastic turn and gets worse for the boy's parents. Oh. Hi, did you call? Yes, I did. Hey, y'all, come here. What happened now? There was a little kid um, saying help. Um, um, a little what? A little kid um, next door saying help. Um, my mom. My mommy got. Were they outside, inside? Um, the kid was outside. The, the kid was outside? How old was the kid? He was, he was like five. Okay. Is, did they bring him back inside or? Um, oh. A person came. A person came. And then. Hey, somebody help me! What's wrong? <laughs>
Where'd they go? What store did they go to? The Apple Store. The what? Apple. The Apple Store? It, it's close to our house. Yeah, it's right down the street. How long have they been gone? Did your mom and dad both go to the store together? No, my dad's at my papa's house. Your dad's at your papa's house? Do you know the phone number there? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Where's the phone? You have a phone in here? No. No? Okay. So your mom left you, went to the Big Apple store? How long has she been gone? You don't know? How old are you? Five. Five. What's your name? People have been breaking into your house. When he keeps saying that she went into the store, you can hear him sounding extremely nervous. Fortunately, the young boy is exceptionally articulate and was able to provide a clear description of the situation. After the kid has made a statement that is relevant to the situation, the mother goes right into the center of it. He's crying with the door open. He was wandering crying out around, there. wandering around out here. Where? Come here. Wandering around out here, wondering he was, he was where crying. you're at. Yeah, he was Why crying. would you scare? Why would you scare? Why would you scare? So, you see your only child? What happened? I mean, come on. Leaving a five-year-old home alone. Right? And what happened? You got the scale on the table, mm -hmm. the five-year-old sitting next to your papers. What'd you say? Your shoe back up smelling like weed. There's roaches. I mean, come on. And now you're telling me you don't know your social. Do you have a warrant? No, sir. Tell me now. We're going to run you in full picture. Wait, say that again. You shouldn't? No, sir. He'll be like, this is a dumb I'm going to put my shoes on. Walk to the door. Oh, come on. What, what, what the hell are you singing about, man? What are you singing about, bro? The 21 year old mom finally shows up, but guess why she left her child alone? Yep, so she could go smoke some weed. Not the best idea. It's pretty clear she's not exactly winning any parenting awards here. The cop also starts off with some friendly chit chat about music with the woman, but then he's got to get back to the serious situation they just walked into. Here's the deal, all right? 
You're going to get a ticket. 205 and Okay. I am not going to what we call is in rule six, where we remove the child from the home, okay? okay? Since Keith Sr., the father, is here, four. he can take four forty five the kid, and all, all right, right. Four five for the and night. All for You're going to get a seven. ticket. Julian is here breaking out windows. Wars, right? Which is why you didn't remember uh, yourself here. He social. arrived in a red key. Right? I asked you that when you told me you didn't remember. Said you have warrants. So we're going to find out right now. So it turns out that the mom had warrants out for her arrest. That's why she refused to give her ID. So they ended up arresting her. Kana, the child's mom, wasn't just arrested for child endangerment. Nope. She also had a warrant dating back to 2020 because she didn't show up for a court hearing about a DUI charge. Talk about getting yourself into a mess, right? This coming case is going to cross all the lines and will make you wonder, how is this woman even a parent? On July 8th, 2024, there was a 911 call about a child. When the first responder arrived, they found the child unresponsive. The apartment was a mess and there was no sign of the mother. But here's the thing, they figured out later that she was the one who called 911. I mean, what could have happened here? Let's look at it. Airborne Police. Airborne Police Department. The officers kept searching the apartment, calling out, but there was no response. And then surprisingly, they find the child curled up in a corner of the room, covered in bites, weighing only 16 pounds and totally unresponsive. Can you imagine their shock when they realized she was alive? That's when they kicked into high gear and sprang into action. It's a heartbreaking moment, but thank goodness they found her. Oh, she's still breathing, she's still breathing. Let's go, let's go. She's still breathing. Get a light. Yeah, well, yeah. Let me get out of the way. It didn't look like it. Yeah. I'd say just pick up and look good. Yeah. Yeah. 295. All right. Excuse me. Call code enforcement. Have them respond, please. The backup arrives almost soon and takes care of the child. They were instantly present to assist the kid begging for help. A few seconds after the mother finally makes her appearance, the police officers do not give any special treatment to her. We're trying to figure out a whole bunch of things, right? A whole bunch of details. You mean if I sit? My back is killing um, me. What do you, you want? To sit down. <laughs> you can have we're, a seat in the back of the... Yeah, we're going to have... You can have a seat in the back of my car. So, can let's... Can I stuff to him, then, I'll, I'll take care of that. Let's, uh, let's walk in the front of my car, all right? Okay, just right here is good. Um, if you want to face my car, just put your hands out to your sides. Nothing, nothing on your uh, in your pockets at all. No pockets. You have um, just underwear underneath your sweats. Just your sweats. Okay, oh, perfect. Three twenty-two. All right, and put your palms together behind your back. Three twenty-two. Tell me, how, tell me how to say your name, Rabia. Okay, Robbie, my name is Ryan Whitaker. I'm a detective, uh, and I am the detective that's going to be handling this case. I'm sorry? I, I can't. I, I can't. Um, it's going to be a little bit, so right, um, you're going to be taken to the Fairborn Police Department. Uh, there's some, some administrative things that we have to do there, uh, take a, a picture and some, some fingerprints, but I'm going to be down to talk to you uh, soon, okay? I, I can't I can't give you an answer like that only because I don't know. Um, but let's go around to the pastor side here. 
have seat. What's this fellow's name back here? Travis, can Travis. you please tell him that that stuff right there needs to go to my kid's dad? Okay. The one that was over here earlier. Just, just hang out right there, man. I'll be right with you. The mom asks about her daughter, probably worried sick, and then she finds out she's being charged with a felony. Totally deserved. I mean, talk about a shocker. Do you know anything about her condition, if she's okay? Um, I do not. Um, right now, you're being arrested for child endangering um, at a felony level, okay? A felony level? Yes. Um, we um, are still, we, we're doing our thing that we have to do, okay? Uh, as Detective Whitaker mentioned, he will be in to speak with you. Uh, right now, we're going to go to our jail in Fairborn and uh, process on those charges and then um, go from there. And as we go through these, this process, I'll try to answer any questions I can best of my ability, okay? All right? Yeah? We'll try to, uh, yeah. Mubalag, who left her child alone in the house, has been charged with endangering a child and felony assault. As for the little one, officials say she's doing better, thank goodness, but she's still got a long way to go before she's fully recovered. Go to the back. Go to the back of the car. Go to the back of the car. I'm gonna go find her. Yeah. Hang out. Your car with your kids inside of it? He, he was opening the door yelling at people, I need my mom. So I want you to step over here a little bit farther away from the kids. All right, can I see that drink for me? All right, go ahead and turn around. Look, turn around. You are under arrest. Turn around. We're gonna walk over to my car so the kids don't see this, okay? Go ahead and walk. The simple fact that babies or pets should not be left in hot cars seems to be obvious, right? Wrong. For some reason, common sense is lacking in certain people, or maybe they simply don't care enough. Here are eight times when babies were left to suffer in hot cars, but thankfully cops were there to swoop in and save the day. Our first case takes place in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, United States, August 31st, back in 2020. A patrolling officer was flagged down by a shopper who reported that a baby had been left in the backseat of a car, parked at Walmart on Warrensville Center Road. Go grab your uh, lockout. Yeah. Clear GMC to Vanita Lee, 58-year-old male, showing out of East Cleveland on the registry. Valley no one. After checking the car plates, dispatch found that the SUV belonged to a 58-year-old man from East Cleveland, but he was nowhere to be found. The cops were under pressure because the temperature inside a car can skyrocket by 20 degrees in just 10 minutes, and that's dangerous, especially for a baby. So the officer and his partner wasted no time and got straight to work, figuring out how to get into the locked SUV. Arco, where are you guys? South. By now, more than 20 minutes had passed with the baby locked in the car, and the temperature had soared well above 75 degrees. The reality is that no temperature or time limit can completely eliminate the risk of a child dying in a hot car. Something had to be done immediately, and the officers couldn't afford to wait any longer.
You know, breaking the window glass isn't always the best option. There's always a risk of the glass hitting the baby and causing more injuries. So, the cops decided on a safer approach by creating an opening on the door to unlock it with a hook. It's much safer this way. However, if this doesn't work out, then the officers would have no choice. Land might have to go for breaking the window as a last resort. Start working that door. Police reports indicated that the baby was losing consciousness and appeared to have passed out from heat exhaustion. Now it was a race against time between life and death, and the officers were just inches away from unlocking the car door. One officer focused on opening the driver's side, while the other worked on the front passenger door, urgently trying to reach the child in time. Finally, all of their efforts paid off and the baby was safe. But now, they needed to have her checked by an EMT to ensure she was breathing okay. You wanna have the squad just check her? While we're here? She's a little hot. Officers found the baby drenched in sweat, but overall she was safe. You see, there are all types of people in the world. On one hand, we have a parent who left their own child to die in a hot car. Doesn't matter if it was intentional or if he was simply too stupid to care. On the other hand, we have a complete stranger approaching the cops, offering help or food for the baby. Uh, we should be all right for right now. We appreciate it, thank you. We have no idea. Uh, if you wanna stick out, but I think we should be all right. We appreciate the help. I got gotcha. you. Understandable. Uh, we're hoping mom or dad or somebody should be out soon. Breaks my heart. Later on, a witness submitted a written statement saying that when he pulled up, the infant child was in the car, and when he came back out 10 minutes later, the child was still in the car. Soon after, the father was arrested and charged with endangering children. Hopefully this experience will teach him something. But before we move on, please take a second to hit that like button. Now, on to the next case. 291, just so you know, we're gonna bust out this window. The baby's been here too long, it's sweating. I tried the unlock attempt, it's not working. It's not, the button's not working. Yeah. Our second case sees us still in Euclid, Ohio, where this time technology, not negligence, caused an infant to become trapped inside a hot car. According to the report, the car's doors locked with the key inside just as she got out. The problem? A two-month-old infant by the name of Sanaya was inside. Uh, five minutes. That's pretty long, dude. How long has the baby been in the car? She's okay. She's okay. She's sweating pretty bad. How long? Break it. Break it. That's... It can, it can get over 100 degrees in that car in a very short amount of time. You got the wedge? As more officers arrive at the scene with more lock-picking tools, the available help increases, but so too does the pressure. An infant is more prone to heat stroke than an adult, and as you might imagine, it's fatal for such a young child. Okay. Get the FD. Get the FD, come on. Just for... Hey. Jason. I can't see... Let's get in a squad around here. Let's get in a squad around here. Let's get in a squad around here. 
Just pressed it, it's not open. You can see the panic setting in on the scene with the mother Nikki reported to have said later. It felt like my life was about to end. Imagine watching your child fade away because of technology. I, for one, definitely understand her. You gotta ask? No. Here, I'm I hit your lock hey, twice. You I hit it twice. Well, this one, you just hit the lock. Can everybody back up, please? I know. Jason, there's a hand right in the back of the car. The Euclid officers are hard at work, but that door will not open. It almost looks like the car is holding that child hostage. What does it want? Oil? By now, the temperature outside was around 85 degrees, and by the time the officers arrived, it was around 104 degrees inside the vehicle. Someone has to make a call fast. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, I'm not doing this back. all day with the baby in the car. No. Hold on. 82 to 291, just so you know, we're going to bust out this window. The baby's been here too long, it's sweating. I tried the unlock attempt, it's not working, it's not, the button's not working. Yeah. Swing it. Hey, Jason. Wait for the call you. We have. Here, here. Hold on, I'm We have an ambulance coming. Yes. Transport out to Wycliffe DMV, Arlington Avenue, DMV, 109732. So we're just going to come back and identify her. She's crying. Can you just hold her on your shoulder? I'm going to put this on her neck. Okay. Be able to get to All right. Uh, can you get her, right. get her bottle? Okay. We're open 24 hours. She's spitting up a little bit. That's all right. She just had a bottle. I know. I'm not. I'm just concerned about her. So. These cops must have felt like Superman, just another day saving one life at a time. Baby Samaya has been rescued thanks to the Euclid police once again. You can see the relief on everyone's faces as the child is returned to the mother's arms. Get her. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is that cold? Hey, baby. We're definitely going to let the paramedics look at her just so make sure she's dehydrated. dehydrated. That car was extremely hot when I opened it up, so. Hey, can you get the plate? Yeah, I got my med pack here. Right? The officers are insisting on the baby being checked by paramedics, which is a great call for sure. Just like in our last case, baby Samaya is sweating, and the officer can feel that she is overheated. Fortunately, they had a bottle of frozen bottle to help cool her down. We're glad that the baby was safe and that it wasn't due to negligence, but rather an unfortunate event. But that's not the case in this next one. Meet Officer Eustace and his trainee, Officer Rama. These two officers are part of the Cobb County PD, and they received a call to check out a call of unattended children running around the neighborhood, chasing dogs on Perch Drive and Marietta. Little did they know that they were in for quite a surprise. Well, let radio know what you got. 2311, we're at the residence and there's a child alone in the vehicle. Put the windows up. And it's locked. Clear on that. 311, the vehicle's off and it's locked. Knock on the door. Upon arriving at the scene, the officers found that there was a four-year-old child locked in one of the cars parked outside. A sense of urgency immediately kicks in as they address dispatch and report their findings. Officer Eustace instructs Officer Rama to knock on the door. Will the parents answer? And the, co and the uh, child's crying. If it's uh, code four with Sarge, we'll break the window out. 
Can you unlock the door? There's no answer, and there seems to be no one at home. With temperatures approximating 83 degrees outside, and no accurate gauge to know how long the child has been locked inside, there is no time to dilly-dally. The officers know this and know exactly what to do. Hulk, smash. Ready to break it? Yep. Hey, back up. Back up, buddy. Go to the back. Go to the back of the car. Go to the back of the car. Go to the back. Come back here. Watch out. You got a window breaker on you? No. Watch your feet. Hold on, buddy. Who's here? What's going on? All right, buddy. All right, three eleven. We got the uh, child out. Can you go ahead and start fire? He got broken. The kid was more worried about the window as if he was the one making car payments, or maybe he was just afraid of parental consequences. Either way, it's lucky he was rescued quickly, but who was stupid enough to lock this kid in there in the first place? Well, that would be Charles Cook, the boyfriend of the child's mother. This guy was arrested shortly after and was charged with two counts of child cruelty. I say good riddance. Such dumb neglect is disgusting. Let's move on to another rescue. Okay. It's okay. I know. I know. What's the matter? We are here in the Dallas suburb of Duncanville, where Officer Panilla is on the scene responding to a 911 call that reported a lone baby in a parked car. With the officer noticing that the child was already covered in sweat and vomit, both signs of overheating, he leaps into action immediately. Huh? Yeah. Contact with the parent or something in there. I don't know. What is it? I know. What's the matter? I know. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I know. Quick and effective with no hesitation in mind. The baby was saved just in the nick of time. Police reported that there was a miscommunication between the baby's mother, grandmother, and two older siblings about who was supposed to be taking care of the nearly one-year-old. It's no surprise that the case was reported to Child Protective Services and a Dallas County grand jury. As for the officer, he was awarded a life-saving award by Safe Kids Greater Dallas. Just great. Moving on. This next case is another case of accidental locking where a child was locked inside the car. This situation required maximum cooperation as it saw both the Flower Mound firefighters and police officers coming together for the rescue. Forty-five seconds. One minute. With both some firefighters trying to jam the window open and other cops keeping a timer, the race against time is on. The reports from this day show the heat at 107 degrees so you can understand the urgency of the clock. Handle? 
15 seconds and we break glass. You got it on? Come on. 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 Let's take glass. Yeah. Let's, we're going to take glass. The original attempt was to pick the lock, so to speak, but that is clearly not working out, and with temperatures in the car rising, it's time for a change of tactics. Don't you agree? The officers clearly do. Ready? Watch your eyes. You can never go wrong with a good window smash, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, we have another successful rescue on our hands. The infant was then taken to an ambulance to cool off and to be evaluated, and all was found okay. Just so you can understand the toll such cases have, listen to this next video of a passionate officer speaking. This lady in Vancouver left her children, a girl aged six, and a three and a half year old boy, unattended in a hot car for about 20 minutes while she shopped. Your children could have died. No, no. Because you don't seem to understand the danger you put those children in. Right? Listen to me. You're talking when you should be listening. Your children should have died. The windows were up, it's bottom. It takes two or three minutes. Why were you arguing? You want me to seize your kids and you never see them again? Is that your problem? That is your problem. You don't seem to understand what you've done. You have a fire truck, an ambulance, and two police cars here because you left your kids and you think it's fine. You wonder why I'm upset? After receiving multiple 911 calls, police arrive to find the car alarm going off. It's no wonder the sergeant is going off on that dumb woman. She looks like she doesn't care at all, and she's lucky not to have been charged. Moving on. On August 22nd, Tampa officers responded to a call where a woman reported her 2011 Kaya Optima stolen. The real treasure, though, was her 11-month-old baby in the back seat of it. Good spot. 30 minutes after the initial call, officers recovered the car, abandoned approximately half a mile away at the intersection of N Jamaica Street and W Wilder Avenue on the other side of a six foot chain link fence. With teamwork and some luck, the baby was recovered unharmed and though overheated, she was safe. You're okay, sweetheart, you're okay. Good, good spot, man. You're okay, darling. You're okay. 
You're doing great, sweetheart. You're doing great. You're doing so good. stole the car. We've been looking for the car. They found the car abandoned with the baby left in the car with the door locked. So, baby was overheating in the car. They took it out and put, hot, uh, put cold water on the Yeah, so she's overheated. I bet the mother felt good being reunited with her child after that ordeal. That is definitely a feel-good moment right there. Let's move on to our next case that's full of child neglect. Back in 2020, 26-year-old Brittany Guerrero was charged with two counts of child neglect after she left her very young children inside a car in a Walmart parking lot. No, Go ahead, why don't you go inside and get, the, get him to do the PA or something. Okay. He has a phone. I don't know if it's her, but in the context, hey buddy. there's a label that says babe on it, so I don't know if it's dad or his mom. Okay. So. How long, what time did you guys, you know what time you guys got here? Never, look at your phone. Yeah, I mean, I called. We were loading groceries, and the boy kept opening the door screaming and screaming, so I'm like, okay, well, maybe, like, he's just fighting with his mom. And then I heard him scream for mommy, so I had him walk over. I called 911 at 346. Okay. And I mean, we and loaded our groceries and everything five before, before that. Five yeah. minutes prior before that. Okay. And he opened up his door and was screaming and crying. Hey, buddy, it's okay. Hey, who's here? Is your mommy inside or daddy? My mommy. Your mommy? What's her name? Do you know? You know her first name? What is it? Brittany. Brittany? Okay. You're okay, buddy. They're good hey, guys. It's They're good guys. His mom name's Brittany, is that the RO? No, actually it's not, I already looked at no, it. No, it's like a Oreo. 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 Okay. You're okay, bud? Hey, it's okay, we're gonna go get her, okay? All right. After the police arrived at the scene, they realized that there was indeed a one-year-old and a four-year-old in the running car, with the mother having been absent for around 30 minutes. To make matters worse, it was close to a busy highway. Brittany? Is this your car with your kids inside of it? Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna need some information from you. You can't leave children inside of a running vehicle for any amount of time, let alone even if they're okay. The child has to be over seven and they have to have a means of communication, which your son does not know how to call you. I can guarantee you that. I have children. Okay, so one, the vehicle can't be running at any point in time with children inside of it. And you can't leave children unattended inside of the vehicle for any length of time. Yeah, you can go talk to them, but we need your license and, uh, you got your license with you? He, he was opening the door yelling at people, I need my mommy. How long were you in the store for? Because we've, we've been here for 15 minutes. Well, it's been more than 15 minutes. Well, despite the cop not being fully spot on with his knowledge of the law, there was still room for his concerns to be valid. The law states that a child can be left unattended in a car so long as one is six years old and the duration does not exceed 15 minutes. Unfortunately for Mrs. Guerrero, she violated both clauses. Maybe I'll have her walk over here so we don't have to put her in handcuffs in front of the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get somebody's phone number. Okay. All right. You wanna just get her over there first real quick for me? Uh, just get her phone Okay. Hey, can you come here real quick? So, I need a phone number for a good family member. Uh, yeah, is he nearby? So. Why? Because we got to contact him. He's got to pick the kids up. Okay. All right. So, I want you to step over here a little bit farther away from the kids. All right. Can I see that drink for me? All right. Go ahead and turn around. Right, look, turn around. You are under arrest. Turn around. We're gonna walk over to my car so the kids don't see this, okay? Go ahead and walk. Alright, go ahead and lean against this car. I'm gonna fix these handcuffs, okay? And the chain jail is on. The cop explains what I've been saying about the severity of Bittany's children. Given their ages and the location of the car, plus the duration of absenteeism, the officer was well within his rights to arrest Mrs. Guerrero. So I'm gonna tell you why you're being arrested, okay? It's two counts of child neglect, okay? We're near a busy intersection at a busy store. The child opened up the door and was screaming for help. Anybody could have walked over there and gotten a vehicle with him, 
okay? You have a one-year-old that is not able to care for itself, a four-year-old that can barely operate a phone, let alone be able to call you or 911 if something were to happen. You understand? Okay. What's a good phone number for his, the dad? Oh my god. Oh, oh no. He's on the right now. Okay, okay. that's okay. He's gonna have to. Oh. oh my god. Can I talk to him or? I will when I, I gotta get his phone number though. According to reports on the issue, the charges against Brittany were dismissed in court on April 13th, 2020. I'm sure she learned from the experience though. The YouTube algorithm thinks you will like this video the best, watch and find out if it is right.